Hello guys, in this video I will share with you some knowledge I've obtained on Polaris to help you out in your game. And yes, I will keep using the Arid Lake clip. First thing I want to make clear is how to make the mechanical Lotus. You need a military drive that you can obtain from crash drones, find it in stashes or get it from mega zombies that you kill. This power display shows how many times you can craft the mecha mechanical Lotus on one military drive. It has 4 bars, which means you can get 4 me mechanical Lotuses for one military drive. The three other ingredients that you need to finally obtain the Mechanic Lotus are Polaris Rose, Cyan Crystals and Copper Coil. This is a military crate. It has a tank counterpart with similar but less valuable loot. These are hunting crates. They drop decent beginner and mid-game items. The white ones are police ones. They have a black counterpart. Do not confuse it with Dead Zone crate that will be shown later. This is the most common and basic sensor room entrance, the windmill. First you have to break the planks, blocking the doorway and then enable the power to finally open the door to the safe zone. This is one of the unique entrances, called Cave. It's hidden behind a waterfall and here, is it, and here it's quite simple to open. This is the dam. Located next to the death zone, it also has some construction wood around, so if you quickly need some tape or rope, you can go there. This is the lighthouse. To get the power needed to open the gate, you just need to attach a cable at the top of th at the top of it, sh as shown in the video. The last one is Norva. It's a house in a little town, and you can find basic starter gear there. Cotton can be found at hospitals, usually spots that start with Saint, while biohazard fibers can be obtained from Haze and on the location shown on the clip. Now, many of you are probably wondering where to find the cyan crystals needed for a mechanical lotus. Well, you don't have to worry, because you can find them in stashes and in drops from observers. They look like big, dark grey bananas with big eye, and not get too close to them, because they will attack. Locations are marked on the map, and these are all I am aware of, so if I miss some, please let me know in the comments. To craft the gas mask, first you need a filter. To craft it, you need one mechanical lotus, four ropes and one can. In the crafting menu you can see two gas masks, there is no difference between them and the broken gas mask can be found from mega zombies. The biohazard hood requires six biohazard rolls that can be crafted from six biohazard fibers. The hidden stashes can grant you some amazing mid to end game loot, depending on your luck. Usually they are hidden on cliffs, near bushes and rocks, so make sure to keep your eyes open. This is the place I will refer to as the trap, although it's not one. Why? Well, I will show you the following footage. Everything seems normal. You have this red cube you can pick up and you're told to put it in one of the side slots of the door. After placing it in one of the spots, nothing will happen and you won't be able to do anything unless you do it like in this clip.
the military drones are a sure way to get military drives. These are how they look on the map, and it's obviously not all of them. The military drive doesn't respawn, so it's one time use only. Polaris roses look like flaming flowers on top of a little rock formations, while copper coils can be found in hospitals and in stashes. While the roses can also be found in stashes, it's better to look for them in the wild. These are the puzzles that will reward you a golden nugget when you complete them. The one in the clip requires you to position the pointer in the direction of the circle on the ground. This puzzle will also reward you with a golden nugget when you complete it. You need to get all of the lights to turn off, but if you don't know how to do it, just spam it randomly and it will eventually solve itself. This is the raiding part, a bit late game, I know, but with the end to other printer you can 5 shot a wooden wall that, are si that has 600 HP. The printer does about 150 structure damage, so it's viable, but I need a lot of ammunition for it. Now, the C4 does 650 structure damage, so it destroys the entire wall with the foundation in one go. Then let's move to the next contender, the scrap wall. I personally would recommend raiding with Brenter, since the C4 can be used to blow open a lot of lockers which you will be able to see later. It takes two C4 to blow through scrap, scrap structures. The armored structures have doubled the HP of the scrap ones, that being 2400, so it's up to you if you want to use C4 or Brenter. If you want to raid a base top down, then it's better to use C4, but if you want to break a single wall, it's better to use Brenter. Now let's check the deployables, that being doors and lockers. The normal scrap door has the HP of the scrap walls, so you can tension it with the Brenter. The normal locker has 300 HP, so you can 3-shot it with Brenter and also 1C4 to break it. The armored locker at 600 HP can be 5-shotted while also taking 1C4 to break it. Now the armored door at 2400 HP behaves the same way as the armored structures, but is more cost efficient to use Brenter on it. While playing, you may hear this sound and wonder what it is. Well, fear not, since it's just everyday humanitarian airdrop. It will be highly contested, so make sure you only go there if you are prepared to die. After reaching it, you can find some really good loot, and here are some examples. The library is located as shown on the map. To do the puzzle, just do what is being done on the following clip. You can find some crates here, so it might help you get a good start. If you didn't know, up on this bridge you can get ton night vision goggles, but watch out since they don't respawn. 
with gun parts that can be found in the death zone. You can upgrade your MP9, Brenter and Walnut into their more powerful counterparts. You can also upgrade the block with homemade upgrade hit, but I won't include it. Gun oil will be another must have for mid to late game. It can be found in stashes, dead zone and crafted. You can craft powerful attachments like stocks, barrel mods and griefs that can help you get an edge over your opponent. Here are the stats of the attachments. And this is how you make gun oil. Make sure that before you go to the dead zone, you do the Expedition 2 quest where you obtain the red keycard. If you get it, you can get it out with more loot in the dead zone. After finishing the Adventurer 3 quest, you obtain the blueprint shop where you buy the key blueprint. After learning it and crafting it, you can head into the dead zone and open a door that would have been previously locked. Inside it, if you took the quest Ranger 4, you will find a mega zombie. Then after killing it, it drops a crate that gives you loot nearly identical to that of an airdrop. Now here is me opening the crate. This will be a quick showcase of the dead zone and the black dead zone crates mentioned at the beginning. Almost all of the dead zone loot is obtained from killing zombies, so make sure to kill all of them. This is one of the crates that will drop you some amazing gear. After reaching its location on the map, you'll find a small cave house. And after entering it, there will be a mysterious person inside, clearly infected with the virus. After talking with him, he will ask you for snowberries. When you leave the cave, you will see some snowberries on bushes nearby. Now, I won't be showing you the rest of this quest, since there is an interesting quiz to it, so make sure to check it out yourself. And as always, thank you for watching the video, and it would be really great if you would leave a like so more people can see it. And if the video helped you, I hope you will share it to your friends.